we're going to be speaking with the director, uh, producer and director of uh, a new documentary uh, which is creating quite a stir. It's called Milked and on the line now, Amy Taylor. Hey, good afternoon, Amy. Thanks for coming on the show. Are you with us, Amy? Oh, can you hear me Hi. okay? I can, Sorry, I can. My, <laughs> my phone might be having issues with reception for some reason. No, no, we're all, we're all good and you're, you're loud and clear. Congratulations okay. on, on this documentary. My goodness, it's, um, it's confronting, but I guess a story that needed to be told. Do you want to take us back to, to the whole, the way it all began and how it, how it all started? Yeah, it definitely is a story that needed to be told. Um, I, I obviously knew quite a lot about the dairy industry going into it, but then, yeah, it completely blew my mind um, finding out, you know, that it basically is failing in every way. Um, there's nothing that's working particularly well, not for the farmers, not for people, not for animals, um, not for the planet. Um, basically, I had um, worked on a short film with Chris Hurawai, who's in the film, and um, we'd got talking about the need to do, you know, something like this, which is a sort of a New Zealand version of cowspiracy, sort of looking at the impacts of animal agriculture. Mm. So, yeah, that was about three years ago, and then um, we kind of, yeah, the film was in the New Zealand International Film Festival in November last year. And it was released globally um, in March this year. What's the feedback you've been getting? Really fantastic feedback. It was the most popular film uh, Kiwi title in the film festival. Um, and well, that's documentaries. And then it also won a whole bunch of international awards. But the main thing is that even farmers who have come to see it and who have watched it um, in any way, they've contacted me. You know, I've had a lot of really positive feedback from farmers just saying that, you know, this, this does need to be told and that people do need to know about um, some of the things that are happening and that could potentially threaten the entire industry. That's a surprise to me that because I thought that you would meet uh, a dreadful backlash given that dairy is so key to our country, isn't it? Yeah. Well, actually, there has been a, a little bit of that also. Um, to be honest, there has been some negative um, comments online, that kind of thing. But in general, yeah, there has been a hugely positive response. Um, the only thing that has been a bit tricky is that there is it's such a hugely powerful um, industry that to get the message out there has been quite tricky. Broadcasters, you know, don't really want to screen it, even though it did so well at the festival and has won a bunch of awards. It's um, it's a tricky one. Yes. Now, uh, talk, uh, Chris Hurawai, uh, the activist, uh, he uh, he's got a he's got a nice touch, hasn't he? Because uh, he he's you know the whole the whole doco starts and he's saying, right, you know, I'm a Kiwi kid. Uh, I had I had tons of milk on my wheat bix, <laughs> you know. That that was yeah, well, uh, that was how I started my day. And even to this day, I feel like milk is a dairy is just pushed, pushed, pushed on us. I, I totally agree. And you know, as you get older, the, you know, there's the threat of osteoporosis. So it's like, you know, all these things. But so many people are lactose yeah. intolerant in in our country. And so yeah, many well, people's health well, are messed up by dairy. Yeah, when one thing that blew my mind was the health side of it, I actually didn't know that there's, you know, the calcium thing for, for dairy, you know, bone health with dairy is just, um, it's a bit of a myth really. So we looked into that quite extensively and talked to a lot of people and, you know, doctors and health professionals. Um, so it was quite mind-blowing that we're still getting told the same old thing that isn't actually relevant um, these days and it's having so many negative impacts that it, it just, yeah, it's it's just, not um, a good thing for what, what anyone, did, really. What did the doctors say? Just tell us, you know, some of the feedback you got from them. Yeah, so basically, if, if you look at the research, um, the the countries that have the highest intake of, of dairy products are also the countries with the highest rate of fractures. That's um, one, you know, quite astounding thing that I came across while researching for this film was mm. just that, um, you know, obviously things like vitamin D and exercise and stuff like that are really important for 
bone health, calcium is important too, but it's it's overrated. A dairy product thing is is not um, not essential at all for bone health. So, um, right. That we, we know everything is backed up on our on our website for the film. So if people want to dig into that stuff, you can just go to milk dot film and under the facts page, there's a whole bunch of information. People can, you know, look. It's you know look and see where we actually got this information from. But yeah, just talking to a lot of um, experts, they back that all up as well. Mm. Gee, it's interesting because it turns all of our beliefs on on their head uh, heads. Really, I mean, you think of our. I think of yeah. my mum, for example. You know, in the being having children in the sixties, and all mm. mum was told by Plunkett that their children needed to be really fat and sort of bloated up on. Yeah, <laughs> on, <laughs> yeah. on like milk. I mean, and it's awful. Yeah. And, and you look. And my, I think my son goes to a oh. school that had the milk in schools program here, you know, up in the Coromandel. And um, that was, you know, around the country. They've they've got rid of that, but they're still doing Kiwi Kickstart breakfast where they're pumping the dairy into the kids first thing in the morning. Um, and and that's, it is infuriating because there's, it's not helping the majority of people, you know, 65% or so of all people around the planet are lactose intolerant um, and it's just, you know, it's high in saturated fat, it's got all sorts of other issues but, you know, you can get all sorts of great um, nutrition straight from plants. You don't have to filter it through animals and get all the bad stuff that comes along with mm. with that. Mm. So, um, yeah, it's just a big marketing machine. Like That was the, the realisation that our country is kind of, you know, unfortunately built on the back of a cow, what well, was a sheep, and now it's a cow. Mm. Um, and it's 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 something that's not going to last because there is, you know, an agricultural disruption on the horizon that's threatening to, to wipe it out in the next 10 to 15 years. Um, and even without that, just the environmental pressure that farmers are under and... Um, there's all sorts of reasons that are putting pressure on the industry and we really feel for farmers and we want people to have a bit of a heads up about the challenges that are coming um, and, you know, the government and everyone to help farmers transition into things that are more sustainable mm. um, for them and for the planet. I, I was impressed to see that you had Dr Jane Goodall uh, in, in the documentary. Was it difficult to uh, to have her input? Um, well, that was a really fortunate experience I had. I, I filmed her tour around the country, around New Zealand a couple of years ago. So I got to spend two weeks filming with her and pretty much that was when this film was just an idea. I guess it was two and a half years ago or so. Mm. And um, yeah, so I kind of spoke with her about what the film would be and, and she agreed to um, to be involved, which was fantastic. Inspiring uh, she, woman, isn't she? Yeah, definitely. And I, after two weeks listening to her talk about it, I, you know, I realised even more that this is such, you know, people like her, people like David Attenborough, everyone is coming out with this message that we need to shift to that plant-based diet, at least predominantly plant-based, um, for the sake of the planet and also for our health. So it actually is a win-win um, for people and for nature. So, yeah, it's, when you've got people like Jane Goodall and, and David Attenborough talking about that, it helps people take that message a lot more seriously. Yeah. What do you say to people who think that you're mm, just a, another greenie, <laughs> another greenie on yeah. a sort of a, a freaky mission to, to sort of change our habits? What would your response be to that? I think underneath it, most people want the same thing. We want we want to have, we want to be healthy. We want to live um, with an environment that's you know, that's in balance and that's thriving. And I think you just have to look at the science and look at, it's not actually about, to me, I mean, my background is actually environmental science and then also wildlife filmmaking. Um, I think you just have to look at the facts and the facts are showing that we need to shift to that. It's not just hippies saying that. It's not, you know, I do live in the Coromandel. People could easily paint me as, um, <laughs> yep, as a hippie. hippie. <laughs> But I'm not, and uh, well, you know, we all probably have some different elements in us. But it's actually about the science. Also, it's it's what's playing out, and and the fact is that, you know, the, the huge chunk of our emissions in this country, nearly half of our emissions, are coming from animal agriculture, um, and we're using so much land here that we could, if we were 
growing plants instead, crops and, and other things that produce more protein per area of land, we could end up rewilding some of the land that we freed up if we did transition into more plant-based um, agriculture. You know, and there's government reports showing that, so it's not actually a secret and it's definitely not some hippie kind of idea. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that, because there will be people uh, listening who will um, not be open to this documentary and its message. I want to ask you about synthetic nitrogen fertilizer. Uh, this mm. is this is key to the documentary. And yeah. wh- what what sort of problems is it causing? Well, obviously, we've gone from not using it at all a few decades ago to just putting huge amounts onto the land. So it's, you know, the the amount in the last 30 years, I think, has increased about 600%. So it's just massive amounts of synthetic nitrogen fertilizer, which is made using fossil fuels to begin with. So that's that's a, the beginning of the issue. And then it causes, it, it obviously ends up causing um, nitrates in the water, which is bad for the environment and also bad for human health. Mm. So we've got <laughs> yeah. people like Dr. Mike Joy, you know, and, and other people coming forward t- talking about the issues of, you know, b- <laughs> blue baby syndrome and colon cancer and all sorts of other health issues that are linked to having high nit- nitrates in the water. So people are in, around Canterbury a classic example of people suffering from that and um, yeah, environmentally it's obviously causing um, algal blooms and all sorts of other issues in the waterways um, so we're basically using it to to have higher stocking rates so that, that has other issues as well, we were effluent and all the rest of it so we're using all this fertiliser to grow more grass so we can have more cows um, so that that means more emissions, more effluent, just all around a really nasty picture. Yeah, it's it's disturbing, to be honest with you. Uh, I, I think um, yeah. the best thing is for people to actually see it and, and make up their own minds. I think it's really heartening that the farming community is embracing some of these changes. That's just me personally. Other people will, you know, will disagree. Do you what? What do you think most people? will take away from from the documentary do you think do you think that they'll go oh hell we need to change this urgently or you know do you think they'll yeah. just start drinking oat milk or i mean what 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 yeah. are some of the things that people are saying yeah the, the biggest thing is most people are, are aware that you know things are actually worse than what that you know worse than what we realize we kind of all know about the waterways and things like that but when you look at the whole picture and you look at the impacts on you know the environment and on health and on farmers and on animals then it's all adding up to a bad a bad picture but one of the most hardening things is people feel very hopeful after watching the film because we do right. include solutions. With, it is solutions focused. We wanted to show there are other ways um, that we can do things and there are farmers shifting to different things. So um, definitely there is a lot of hope and New Zealand has got a history of you know, pivoting and, and doing things with innovation and you know, we don't have to keep doing the same old thing. Um, even though obviously it's a huge part of our culture, we can mm. we can change to a better way. So, yeah. I guess some of the older generation could find this challenging because we all get Definitely. stuck in our ways as as we age. <clears throat> and and you know yeah. you know I see that uh, that you you make a comment that they they've been alienated a bit in in an industrial system that isn't really of their own making. It's just like we've always done it this way, so let's just keep mm. doing it this way, even though it's not good for anyone, including the farmers. So I guess that's what you're yeah. up against, isn't it? Yeah, it's just breaking through that. Um you know, it is a cultural thing. I guess it's just almost brainwashing in some ways when people grow up on farms and they think that that's, you know, just what we have to do when actually there are plenty of other things that we can be using that land for. Um, so, yeah, it is, it's, a, it's a challenge. But really when people watch the film, I think they realise that the intention behind it is good. It's not about bashing farmers. We're not, we actually really want to support farmers, but just to do something different that's, you know, that's better all around. Like most farmers are not that happy um, having to do, you know, milking cows every day, getting up early and dealing with calving and all of that super stressful as well as the debt that people are suffering from. So 
there's got to be a better way for everyone. And there is, you know, what, the next project I'm doing now, I can't talk much about it, but <laughs> right. it is following, um, you know, um, uh, people making that change. Mm. You know, when, when, you, when you look at milk and uh, people make the point that it, it is brutal and it's quite tragic and of course we have the situation with it, it, it's awful really when, when you when you confront it we don't in our everyday lives but we should so 2 million unwanted newborn bobby calves taken from mm. their mums sent to slaughter every year 2 million yeah, that is a lot, and that's just the animals that are, you know, unwanted. The ones who stay in the system still don't have a great, you know, it's not a happy outcome for them either. They end up going through that same process of, you know, mm. they've been genetically selected to produce double the amount of milk, and or at least that, and um, and have to pump out babies each year and get those babies taken from them and deal with mastitis and lameness and extreme weather conditions, and it's just... You know, there's no way that it can be done well for animals, not on a, yeah, not in a sustainable way. So, mm. um, yeah, th- those facts were shocking. We obviously didn't want to cover too much about the animal cruelty side of it because we didn't want to put people off watching it. So it, it is, um, you know, we do... You have to treat that, treat that line carefully, I suppose. Yeah, but exactly. Yeah. Just did not want to make people be unable to watch it so um the feedback that we've gotten is just that it's it's you know just right really with showing what the reality is but without going into it too much so yeah Mm. oh well it's great so you're actually going to be having a screening in arrowtown this weekend amy yeah, a bit of a spontaneous one. I was um, actually on Waikiki Island last weekend and we had a screening there and it, and it was really popular and it went really well and I thought, while I'm down this way, it would be great to just see what the interest is. And um, yeah, so the screening is at 2 o'clock on Saturday at Dorothy Brown's. Um, sounds like it's a great cinema, so I'm really looking forward to that. It is a great cinema, you know. It really is. It's um, <laughs> welcoming. It's got a wee bookshop as part of it. There's a, there's even a... <laughs> I'll do a little ad for them, but they've even got a wee gin bar yeah. out the front. Like, it's a really... Lo- oh, fantastic. It's a lovely little spot, you know. No milk. Yeah. Uh, not No milk and gin. Just, um, yeah. But, yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> it, it's very comfortable and it's kind of um, boutique and fun. So it is. It's a great yeah. It's a great place. And I, I think... Um, I think people will be very interested in this. You know, of course, you're right in the heart of, well, very close mm. to a big farming area, you know, the Southland yeah. farmland and all that. But mm. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to talk to a few farmer friends and, and see what they think about this. So I, I think yeah. I think it's a very brave undertaking, what you've done. Yeah, well, it had to be done. I have to, you know, it certainly wasn't a super fun project to film and make, you know, but um, it, the end result is actually an entertaining film. We wanted it to be watchable and compelling and interesting. But um, I didn't do it for pleasure. It was definitely about, um, about getting that message out there and mm. um, just really seeing the need for it. When you travel around this country and you just see the impacts everywhere you look, you know, we could be having, could be rewilding so much of that land if we use the land in better ways um, I think that's the key motivation for me just keep keep trying to get it out there so yeah I'll be there for the Q&A and, and people can hit me up with any questions that they have okay mm-hmm. it's uh, interesting yeah. you know Amy because uh, we get a few callers and I've had a couple of texts and I, I have to I have to ask you a question here someone's uh, written in and said would you rather the animals w- were never born and had no life now she's talking about the bobby calves I guess do you, yeah, do you sure. have an ans- answer yeah. for this <laughs> That's quite a common one and and to be honest, we never had cows in this country and I don't believe we should be having, um, you know, there's no need for them to be here. Um, They're not having any positive impact on the land and um, there are places, animal sanctuaries, where cows would still exist. It doesn't mean they would go extinct or anything like that and I actually do believe that you know, if you're, a, if you're a human, if you were having the choice to be born into a sort of a really horrible situation or to not be born at all, I, I think I would choose the path of less suffering, to be honest. I don't, I don't see mm. the need to bring animals, you know, you wouldn't do it with a dog or a cat. Mm. You wouldn't, you know, put them through that. If we were sending two million puppies a year into, you know, into slaughter, um, I think people would be horrified by that. And I, I don't personally see much of a difference with the bobby calves. Um, they're gorgeous creatures. You know, when you see them for yourself at four days old getting loaded into trucks, I think it's just, it's pretty obvious that that should not be happening. 
Um, and if it means not having dairy cows, um, you know, other than an animal sanctuary, then so be it. Mm. I know what you mean. I think, yeah, I, it's hard for to be an animal lover too. Um, but then I don't want to be a hypocrite because, you know, yeah, it's it's interesting. It's 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 going to be a challenge. There's it's a lot going to, be, to think about. There's a lot to <laughs> think is. about. And the it's other the sure. other question I, mean, of, I was a yeah. big cheese lover, so I ate cheese for a long time. And you know, it was when I had my son eight nine years ago that I went back to cutting that out. Um, we just everyone just thinks it's you know it's, we have to do it and it's worth it. We all love that product. Um, but at the end of the day, I think if you had to see the reality of those two million calves, and not just that, it's everything else. It's the science of the environment and, and the health. Um, it's just, it's not really justifiable. Okay, I've got another question to you. One of the, one of the listeners has said, uh, did you go into this project with, with an open mind or did you pretty much have a preconceived idea of what you would find or, you know, and what your I message would be? yeah. Obviously, I had some idea about what the impacts were, but I was open-minded to the extent where I, you know, wanted to meet with farmers, which which we did, and talk with them about how it was for them and and about how how it was working out. And it, I think that was what kind of was the nail in the coffin for me: the fact that even the farmers are not, in general, happy with with how their life is. You know, as a dairy farmer, there's so many people struggling with that. So. I think realising that it's not even working for farmers and it, the economy situation is very fragile, the fact that if it's going to get wiped out by animal-free dairy in the next 10 or 15 years, we have to transition anyway. So it was those things that kind of made me realise there's no way that this industry, you know, should be existing in the way that it does now. Um, yeah, it's interesting because you've got James Cameron, yeah. you know, commenting on the doco, a powerful wake-up yeah. call that the world is getting milked. Incredible to have someone of his power and prestige. Yeah, so Susie, his, his wife, is actually an, interviewed in the film. They had a dairy farm that they transitioned and they've, you know, they've obviously done that, um, you know, amazingly and, and they're kind of, they're wanting to do it, they've wanted to do it in a way that other farmers could learn from and benefit from as well so they're just really kind of trying to show uh, you know the change that can happen if you if you move it out of dairy into other things so they're the number one um, producers of organic brassica now in the country okay um and they apparently make more money per area of land doing that so um interesting yeah but it it was uh, pretty incredible having him get involved he had a couple of chats with me about the film and um, yeah, came to the Wellington um, premiere and was very supportive. Um, but Susie's been incredible. She's an executive producer and is very passionate about the subject and has written a book um, called OMD, which is one meal a day. Uh, one, yeah, so it was mm. about changing even one meal of your uh, during the day to plant based and the impact that that can have. So. Mm. Um, okay. Yeah, fantastic people. Mm. And, you know, behind all this is the money, isn't it? I mean, you know, a billion-dollar industry. Uh, that's yeah, why it was a brave, yeah, a brave area to go <laughs> exploring mm. in, wasn't it? <laughs> How did, yeah. Yeah. What are your thoughts scary. on that? Well, yeah, it would, it would be, right? It is, for sure, sometimes. Like, there's been some not-so-great things happen um, in the last few months, and I do sometimes wonder if that was, you know, if those things have happened because of the dairy industry coming at me. I'm not entirely sure. Um, so, yeah, it is tricky, but it's still mm. uh, the risk of doing it didn't outweigh, you know, the need for it to be done, I guess. Um, mm. Yeah, so... I. I don't know. I think I've always been one of those people that just jumps into things too, if it's kind of what my heart's telling me I have to do. <laughs> so yeah, that was yeah. that was definitely one of those things. But there have been times where I have wondered um, if it you was know, too what, much. <laughs> yeah, like whether it was a, a a wise choice to to do that. But yeah, it did need to be done. And there had been other things that had you know exposed different parts of the dairy industry, but nothing that kind of showed the whole picture like this. So, mm. yeah, it, was, it yeah. was needed for sure. 
Now, Chris Hirawai, the activist who, who you know, the, who, who is the main uh, protagonist in, in the film, how did he feel yeah. at, at, the, at the end of it all? Like, wh- was he a little bit scarred as well? Or, you know, when, when you guys sat down to talk about what you'd uncovered, was it yeah. kind of interesting? Yeah. Yeah, I think we both found the whole experience really hard. I mean, obviously, the the film itself, there was so much research involved and, you know, there was three or four of us that kind of did that and um, and it was just a hard process in general. And then, but, you know, getting that positive feedback, that, that's been the amazing thing. Like, we're all really happy with how it's been received. You know, people that might have a negative idea about it and then they watch it and then they actually kind of go, oh, yeah, you know, we can see what you're trying to do. You're just actually trying to create some positive change Um, and people are making those changes, you know, telling us we're reducing dairy or cutting out dairy. Um, So I think that's kind of made it worthwhile for... You you know, for all of Mm. us involved. Mm. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it was mostly um, mostly a very small crew of people, so... um, yeah, I think it's made it worthwhile. But yeah, I'm not sure. He's kind of doing his own um, his own projects, and and I think you know diversifying from just the dairy stuff. But my next project is still following um, a dairy related story, some farmers transitioning. So right. I'm not out of it yet. <laughs> still you're still, in, you're still bogged down by dairy. <laughs> yeah, still going to be. Um, yep. Well, but I think it, it's, it's an important thing that I wanted to do as a not a sequel, but as a as a follow up story, just to show you know really it's a really interesting group of guys that are doing this and just their ideas and and so that's the next plan. Mm. Well, Amy Taylor, I take my hat off to you for for being courageous and <laughs> for tackling Crazy. it head on. Crazy, but. <laughs> But um, <laughs> yeah. but committed, you know, and and yeah. you know, uh, if anyone is listening and and perhaps they have, oh, I don't know, they have questions or they, you know, and they've got the opportunity to have a Q and A with you on Sunday. We'll get along to Dorothy Brown's in Arrowtown at two mm. o'clock. And would be, oh Saturday. Oh uh, sorry, Saturday. 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 My apologies, Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. And then. Saturday, yeah. w- where, if anyone else around the country and other areas wants to see Milt, where? Do they go? When, when, well, how can they get hold online, of it? Well, it is online, so you can, oh, cool. you can watch it. We do have it on a platform called Water Bear, which is, called, which is a sort of a Netflix for nature. It's Water Bear, but it's also on YouTube. We wanted to make it as freely available as possible. Um, and, yeah, so basically the, the screenings were really mostly about the Q&A and about the community getting together and, and um, the discussion that can happen afterwards which is always, um, was really, yeah, it's been great. We've done quite a few screenings, so mm. it's a really good way to do it. Um, but, yeah, people can contact me through the through the website um, or social media, so that's another way if anyone does have questions, they, mm. can, they can contact me directly. All right, Amy. Well, it's been really interesting chatting with you today and congratulations mm, on all your hard work and, and to Chris and all the best with, uh, with yeah, with the Saturday screening. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for being open-minded enough to um, have a chat with me about it. Well, I appreciate it. do you know what? I mean, <laughs> it, it, you know, we are meant to be a station allowing all opinions and I feel that yeah. it doesn't matter what side they come from, it's really important to have to hear people's stories. And I, I for one, would like to, you know, well, I, I just think it's good to support, you know, that. So uh, so thank you. Thank you so much. And yeah. and all the best for future projects too, hey? <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Should be um, should be fun. Oh yeah, <laughs> thank you so much, <laughs> Amy Taylor from the Coromandel, uh, producer and director of the documentary Milt.